y'all. It's me, Kabat for another video. And today we're reacting to the orchestrated hit of LA Capone. Back door and at the studio though. Who knows? Like, comment, subscribe, share the video with the 2000 subs. Let me know what videos you want me to do in the comments, what songs you want me to react to in the comments, all that other stuff. And yeah, y'all go in the comments right now and let me know if y'all think he was backdoored or not. I have no intake on this opinion until the video is over. So I'm gonna give it my honest opinion. Uh, opinion. Opinion when the video is over. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah, bro, we're gonna see, bro. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video with the 2000 subs. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, we'll get to it without saying too much. Let's get to the video. When I heard he got sh where and how, like, when the shit finally started, like, what the fuck? Because, like, me in LA, like, so, like, I was shocked because I'm like, what the fuck was he even over there doing? What was going on? You know what I'm saying? The doctors came out with the news and they told me, and then it just got ugly from right there. Like, that shit was wild as hell. From that point on, <clears throat> It was like instant tears, hollering, all this and that. And I just knew. L.A. Capone, whose real name was Leonard Anderson, was an American rapper from Chicago. And he began his music career as a teenager in the early 2010s. On the 26th of September in 2013, Leonard, who was 17 years old at the time, had gone. Bro, he was hard, bro. Me and bro, as a store, we got 50 cent cakes. Oh, God. Hey, man. Me and bro, as a store, we got 50 cent cakes. If you can't break bread, you fake. That's the most iconic. That's one of the most iconic, like, sh Chicago freaking bars of all time, bro. Me and bro was at the store, we got 50 cents in case. If you can't break bread, then you fucking fake. Onto the South Shore Recording Studio, which was located in the 7000 block of South Stony Island Avenue in Chicago, in the company of his friends to record the final track of his last album. In the evening of that same day, at around 6.25 p.m., he had been seen walking out of the recording studio, accompanied by his friend. They were both waiting for their ride, which was already a few minutes late to arrive. But when it was taking too long, Leonard decided to check the area to see if the driver was waiting for them around the corner. However, as he was walking down an alley close to the intersection of 70th Street and Stony Island Avenue, he was approached by his assailant from behind and shot four times in his right thigh and lower back. As soon as the shots were fired, his friend, who had been waiting with him, quickly rushed towards him and called an ambulance. Shortly after that, he was rushed to the Northwestern Hospital, where he succumbed to his injuries at about 8.30 p.m. after losing too much blood. According to his mother, Deidre Morris, who was 37 years old at the time, the hospital staff had been able to stop the bleeding twice but he got tired of trying to fight and gave up the ghost the third time he started bleeding. She had, in fact, claimed that she had walked past a group of policemen on that day, but had thought nothing of it until her friend, Erica, had broken the news to her via a phone call. According to her, she had immediately made her way yeah. to the hospital and was trying to keep herself busy as the doctors treated her. Wait, okay, okay, so, um... Backtrack, backtrack, and backtrack, okay? Okay, look, boom. If, okay, just hop to the speaking, right? If his ops did do this, bro, it's like, how did they know he was even in that building, bro? Because if they would have known that he went in the building, that person or that they would have went in the building too. Instead of just waiting outside for hours, bro. Like, who, like, come on now. So, I, I don't know, bro. It's too early to say, bro. I don't know. Son, but she knew the battle was lost as soon as she heard her mother scream. Apparently, Capone's passing had dealt a big blow to her and she had not even expected him to pass away. According to her, he had been shot a year before in 2012, but had survived after a series of surgeries and other treatments had been administered. They had also had a very close relationship and she had pampered him as a child 
because he was her only son. In fact, she had brought him a crown for his birthday and made everyone else call him king. Shaken by his passing, Morris had paced through her second floor apartment the day after his demise and had gone on a cleaning spree, throwing away several items including Capone's birthday cake and admitting that she was restless because she didn't know what to do with herself and stopping would make her think too hard about all that had happened. According to her, Leonard had only turned 17 the week before his passing Damn. and still had some of the homemade chocolate cake with chocolate frosting she had baked for him because he didn't like store-bought cake. She also stated that Leonard had been expecting a package and that he had called her hours before he was shot to confirm if it had been delivered. Sadly, however, he didn't get to receive the package, getting a driver's license, or even go to prom, as his life was cruelly cut short. According to reports, L.A. Compone had a very close relationship with Lil Durk, who appeared in a couple of his music videos, as they were both members of the real music scene in Chicago. Lil Durk, whose real name is Dirk Banks, is an American rapper and songwriter who had affiliations with the Black Disciples Street Gang in the 600 set. In fact, both Lil Durk and L.A. Compone had been part of the Black Disciples Street Gang and were part of a close-knit group of artists known as OTF, Only the Family, which is led by Lil Durk. Interestingly, following the passing of Capone, there have been many speculations about- Y'all know how big L.A. Capone would have been, bro? If he didn't die, bro, like y'all don't like y'all don't understand like the potential that bro had, bro. Like he could have been where fucking Dirk is now, freaking Vaughn was, like freaking like like all them niggas, bro. Like it's crazy. Like all this talent is all getting cut short because people just want to get back and just film it just off everybody. So it's like it's crazy. Who did the hit and why he was hit? In fact. Many have said that Lil Durk had a hand in Capone's passing and he had a long history of law-breaking activities and is an ex-convict. Despite this, there is no concrete evidence to suggest that Lil Durk was directly involved in L.A. Capone's hit. In fact, as soon as Capone was shot, he was one of the first sets of people to wish for him to get better via tweet before making another tweet at around 8 p.m. of the same day for Capone to rest in peace. But I'm not saying Dirk did it, but most of the people that are like, and the reason why is somebody dies, they uh, they like tweet and like, like do like shit first. So, so all the like spotlight and um, attention like, like shifts away from them, you know? So it's like, hey, we gotta think about that too, you feel me? Capone did not have the opportunity to release any mixtapes during his lifetime. However, prior to his passing, he had been actively working on a mixtape titled Separate Myself. And after he passed, his associates decided to honor his legacy by releasing a mixtape called King LA on his behalf. This compilation features his earlier song and true to the essence of drill music, candidly portrays his experience as a member of the Black Disciple Gang. Nevertheless, both the community and the police still need to catch the culprit of the crime, and they soon found out that L.A. Capone's gang affiliation, 600, was at war with several rival gangs, including the Gangster Disciples. More so, Capone had even made disrespectful remarks about one of the deceased members of the Gangster Disciples, stating, Shondell, how the hot shit feel in this song titled Play for Key. <coughs> Woo! Okay, buddy. Shondell, hot. Okay, okay. I ain't gonna repeat it. Okay, buddy, you got it. Okay, yep. Yeah. You're different. You got it. However, the majority of people suspected that the 051 Young Money Gang, which is faction affiliated with the Mickey Cobras, was responsible for Capone's hit. However, all of the speculation stopped when 25-year-old Miko Buchanan, 21-year-old Michael Mays, and 20-year-old Saki Hardy Johnson were indicted for the assassination of Capone. 
The three men were tried on different days and given different sentences. According to Cook County court records, Miko Buchanan had been sentenced to 45 years in prison after he was charged with homicide for allegedly being the driver of the car that contained the gunman. According to prosecutors, Buchanan had confessed to them that he had watched the shooter sneak up on Anderson and open fire with a 40 or 45 caliber handgun. Following that, he pleaded guilty on the 2nd of November 2013 before Judge Mara Slater Boyle, who ruled that he would receive credit for serving 802 days in the Cook County Jail and ordered that he serve three years of supervised release. And according to Illinois' Department of Corrections record, Buchanan officially began the sentence at the Menard Correctional Center on the 3rd of November. Michael Mays and Saki Hardy Johnson, on the other hand, admitted that they had gotten a firearm prior to their arrival at the studio and that they had been in a stationary vehicle, which will act as a diversionary tactic in case the police appeared at the scene before they could leave. On the 21st of November, 2013, Saki Hardy Johnson was sentenced to 60 years in prison and was admitted to the Stateville Correctional Center on the same day after he was found guilty of Capone's murder. Finally, Michael Mays was sentenced to 24 years in prison and was admitted to the Stateville Correctional Center on Thursday, the 30th of March, 2017. After all the culprits got their respective sentences, Capone's mother posted a picture of him on social media, saying that she was tired but never gave up and that she fought very hard to get justice as she had promised. Rest in peace, L.A. Capone. Damn, bro. I know she hurts. That was her only son, too, bro. So you know that. Yeah, that shit hit. Arsha, that's your reaction to the orchestrated hit of L.A. Capone, Bad Door at the Studio. I don't know if it was Bad Door, because, like, it don't really say how it was Bad Door, because they just said that the three guys that killed him was, like, his ops, basically. So it's like, I don't know how he was Bad Door. But again, his mans could have took. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, shaggy, bro. I don't know. But y'all let me know in the comments if y'all think he was Bad Door or not. Um, like I'm sure I should have video with 2,000 subs. Uh, Chase the Gene, but actually, show the video to your grandpa and your cobra that lives in Minnesota. I love y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. Share the video over 2,000 subs. Chase the Gene for the Michael Chase for you, all right? I love y'all, and yeah. We out.